Hello everyone and welcome to World of Warship Blitz. Today for something a little different, well slightly different, is um, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of commanders, in particular the legendary commanders. So in a moment of weakness I went out and purchased the two legendary commanders, um, Franz von Hipper and uh, David Beatty, who is the British legendary commander. Now we'll go through Franz von Hipper first for the very important reasons which we'll get to when we see David Beatty. Um, so basically you can see the commander has normal set of skills apart from some skills are slightly different or starred and what I'll do is go through these to explain how different they are and how important that is. So the first skill we'll look at is the tier or the level 2 skill. So normally in a German ship that has a commander, generally I go for plus one sonar um, because basically I try and maximise my consumables. However, in the case of Franz von Hipper, you are rewarded instead for your armament repair expert. So the normal armament repair expert in any other commander is 33% improved, so that's a third off. Um, for Franz von Hipper, that's 45%, and I will probably take that skill, in fact seeing as we're there, I will take that skill, right, um, because basically he is a commander who is specialised for battleships who often lose, in the case of the Bismarck, um, at least in the Tirpitz, um, their modules, their secondary armament, so it brings them back online. At level 3 there's no special skill, at level 4 the useless Kraken skill that other commanders have, that gives you a whole lot of bonuses is if you ever achieve a Kraken, and by the way, if you ever achieve a Kraken, um, there is no point in having all those bonuses because you've probably won the battle. But anyway, um, instead he has um, this sixth sense skill. The detection indicator will show how many opponents are locking on to you. As you can see, it'll be the next skill I get. I'm not quite there yet, but still, we're working on it. So, um, But we can show you how that skill works because in David BT, for reasons that will become obvious shortly, um, he has that skill. Uh, at tier 5, at level 5, nothing. At level 6, slight bit of confusion here, but the sonar skill. So generally your, um, your normal recon and surveillance gives you a plus 25% duration, which you get, and a 33% reduced cooldown. This gives you a 50% reduced cooldown, which would be awesome if you had more of them. But in this um, particular case, you don't. So uh, it's sort of questionable combination there, to be fair. Um, maybe when you're in tense action with uh, destroyers, you'd need them close together. To be fair, I never use all three, or hardly ever use all three in a battle. So maybe I'm being a bit precious, and it's always good to have them back. And I always do get that um, skill for, for my German captain. So that's quite nice. Um, Yes, so far um, improvements, but one, nothing I'd call earth shattering. This next one, <laughs> this next one I have issue with. So, normally what happens in a, um, a precise aiming or a marksman is you get a plus 33% precise aiming school duration and a minus 30% precise aiming school cooldown, and I usually get that for my German ships because what that means is that for a battleship, you can get one shot when you start and one shot just before it finishes. So generally it lasts 20 seconds and the Bismarck or the Tirpitz, that's 19 seconds between shells. You're not reliable enough to basically get that extra second to, to get off the shells in that second and then your, your final ones in that second. So generally that plus 20, that plus 25 percent helps because what it does is it takes it up from 20 seconds to 25 seconds. Now if I decide to put him in a cruiser, such as the Hipper, or the Hindenburg, which I don't have, or even the York, um, they have 10 second reloads. So this um, precise aiming skill provides exactly zero benefit <laughs> over the standard precise aiming. It takes your duration from 25 seconds to 28.5 seconds or something similar to that. And, oh, 26 uh, a third of 20 is basically six point, so 727 seconds ish um, 
that's not really much of a difference. So it certainly doesn't get you three shots in a cruiser, and it certainly doesn't get you three shots in a battleship. So really, the difference between this skill and the standard precise aiming is that you get to muck around a little bit longer fiddling with your guns. So not really super impressed by that. Okay, the next one is the target. Um, because basically, this is awesome. A 20% maximum shell dispersion improvement across automatic and manual secondary batteries. 15% is your standard, and I have that on my Bismarck Captain, and I'm nearly there with my Gneiser now Captain, and it is excellent. I have it uh, when the Bismarck Captain goes in the turpits. It's good to have accurate secondaries, because man, your main guns, they are not accurate at all. However, it is one long grind to get there because um, this um, sixth sense, as you'll see shortly, is very useful. This is probably what I'd define as the next useful one in that set, or next super useful one. Uh, there's some benefits in the sonar. The precise aiming allows you to muck around a little bit between shots, but really this is the next major benefit. Other than that, we have Armoured Cap Piercing Shell Plus. So, in your standard captain, that's a plus 5% maximum penetration and plus 10% sustainability. Here it's half again to plus 7.5% and plus 15%. So, obviously, a great improvement there, but that's a long, long way away. And um, I'm not particularly efficient with my captains. I put them in a ship and tend to stay there, and I don't tend to move them between ships, which is probably a mistake, but that mistake has been made which means I have no captains, exactly zero captains, at 10, 11, or 12. So um, that's one long grind, particularly if we go back. I have exactly two premium German ships. One is the Tirpitz, the other is the um, Graf Zeppelin, the aircraft carrier, and um, I have to choose which ship I put them in. And the Admiral Hipper is the one that I play the most, but he's not really super specialised for the Admiral Hipper. Probably that the Admiral Hipper would benefit from the um, Sixth Sense. Um, certainly not from the secondaries, but still. So the German captain was less impressive, and maybe that's situational for me, because if I was grinding my up, way up through the final German capital ships, he would be fantastic. But the situation I'm in, I don't have enough ships to swap around him. him. And um, yeah, the skills that he really excels at are quite high in the tree. However, let's go have a look at David Beatty. Because I will have to tell you that David Beatty is, let's go and find him, is slightly different from what will become obvious very shortly. So firstly, and as you can see, I've got him a little bit further. And you'll be able to tell why in a second. Secondly, he has a Torpedo Alert Plus, which to me <laughs> means that he's perfect for the Leander. Seriously, um, fantastic for the Leander, but yeah, obviously for any cruiser. Um, so your normal Torpedo Alert is plus 15%, plus 20% detection is a little bit extra and very nice to have. He also has the Sixth Sense, and you'll see that shortly, assuming the battle isn't terrible and I don't, don't quit out of it, rage quit out of it, but... Um, Here's where all of a sudden you forget Admiral von Hipperhu, <laughs> because here you have plus 22.5% hit points recovered when using repair kits. Right, let's just take that in for a second. So, normally your um, survivalist is 15% um, hit points recovered. Um, this is 22.5%. This is half again, and that is incredible. So, for context, let's go out and find these. Um, so, this recovers 14.3% of hit points in 10, 12, 10 seconds. That recovers 16.7, the advanced repair kit. I use the advanced repair kits in my Leander and my Lo Yang, and I really noticed a difference. I really like these premium consumables in those ships they made a phenomenal difference so obviously the difference between 14.3 
and 16.7 is enough to make a considerable difference. 16.7 to 22.5. By the time you've used your three repair kits, and don't forget, he's boosting your standard repair kits. <laughs> He's not boosting your premiums. By the time you've done that, that's 67.5. Two thirds of your hit points are returned. So 14 point, was it 14.7? Let's go find that. And we're going to do maths while we're, um, so that is 14.3. Uh, so 28.6, 38, 42, 43, 42.9. I think is what you get, so not quite half, just over 40% as opposed to two thirds, an incredible difference. So yeah, hence the <laughs> captain is far more advanced. The other reason this captain is far more advanced is because I have a number of British premiums. I also have the Dreadnought, but he hardly earns enough out of that. But switching in between the first, um, first victory bonuses between the Nelson the Belfast and the Warspite is a great way for that guy to get ahead in life and get ahead he has. So um, the what I am aiming for and my objective in all this is to get to, um, oh by the way he does have the sixth sense but let's go here, um, is to get to this mist weaver which uh, with your smoke generation duration, smoke generation skill duration, your radius is good because that means that you can do more with it, and your cooldown time. Now, um, Mist Weaver means fantastic cooldown time, so if we compare that with the standard, it's plus 15%, plus 15%, plus 30, 33%, so the cooldown is the same, but you get slightly longer duration and slightly larger radius. And... Um, the difference between the standard smoke and the mist weaver smoke is pretty good so i'm looking forward to the mist weaver plus especially in the belfast two more skills 13.3 percent chance of destroying modules on enemy ships that is up from 10 percent which is yeah okay i'll take it but bearing in mind that um the alternatives are either useless for the english the engine overload or fairly pointless because English secondaries just don't have the same sort of range and heft as as, as German secondaries. So damage moduling it mod, module damaging it will be. The final skill that he has is a 10% damage citadel by main battery up from 7.5%. Anything that provides a bonus to your, your um your citadel chance is worth having. So, what's he like in action? So, let me pick a ship and go into battle. And as usual, with these big risks, what could go wrong? Uh, so, um, let's just go and see how many people are playing. Uh, it's God knows what o'clock in the United States, which means that most of the levels are fairly random. We could end up in a tier 7 and 8, which is looking pretty likely with those numbers. Um, those tier 8s may drag a few, oops, no, they're gone, into a match. So we've got 12 in tier 7 waiting to go, of which I'm one of them. Hopefully not too many carriers. Uh, four aircraft carriers, not too bad. And we're in battle. It is a seven and a seven and a seven with a couple of sixes. Okay, that Saipan is not a lot of fun for me. This could be a short battle. <laughs> we're in the straight domination, so we are in a domination match, which, okay, is not great for my Nelson. So let us lumber our Nelson up to speed. Uh, we have two destroyers, that's enough, that is, that is enough of an excuse, and you can't hear this, but I certainly can, that is enough of an excuse to load up HE. Our carrier is scouting out, that's great, because hopefully I'll get to use that AP to shoot at something. Our carrier is heading towards the something, 
Let's just keep what we've got. That's our dog. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? You're going to get some yappy background noises. The dog barks at a van that's going down our street. Okay, the lead brick mass. Oh, he's going to go downstairs as he slowed down. So let's not give him too much lead. Oh, not as much as I'd want, but better than I'd hoped. Okay, we'll turn away and we'll get our secondaries or our other... Oh, I think we're going to go here. Now that Liebrich Mass, he's probably going to try and torpedo me, so that's great. He's, um, now I'm getting targeted by one enemy there. Um, that Liebrich Mass would better work out what's good for him. Now, unfortunately for me, he's probably launched torpedoes, so I'm expecting incoming. Okay, that's nice to know. Here we go. Well, let's see if a dispersion brings some of those online. Ah, uh, thank you. We'll take the capture zone after we do this to you. Oh, he survived that. No, he didn't survive whatever went after him. Right, okay. Well, we didn't get any kills, but we certainly, um, oh, here we go. Oh, dear. Oops, I'm not proceeding forward fast enough. So I'm going to wear a few of those. And right. Watch this heel. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, if I'd taken a few less torpedoes, I'd be back to a prime ship with no scratches on the paintwork. Well, that Graf Zeppelin's brave, isn't he? <laughs> Okay, this is going to be a bit of a walkover. I have no idea what the battleship that was backing up that destroyer and that cruiser was doing or thinking because I really would have struggled if I'd been hammered by a battleship because the Nelson is very soft. And that's why you need to support your little ships, guys. As a little ship driver, support your little ships. Unfortunately, you've probably seen exactly one example where the sixth sense comes into play. Um, we may have to do the, the unthinkable and have two games in one video. Oh dear, I'll get to fire at this carrier anyway. That'll make me feel better. I bet you the Saipan's feeling a bit lonely. <laughs> Look at all those Graf Zeppelin planes take off. Uh, Saipan will be able to defend himself against that, but not a lot else. Oh, there's some torpedoes going in, battery fire. Oh, come on, I can't end the game on 18,000. Oh, here we go, we'll fire in there. We'll get some pits in. Ha ha, yes. Right, well that was a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> What are we going to do? I don't think it's even worth looking at the stats. I'm afraid to see how we ranked amongst the team. I mean, we certainly helped. We, we, uh, we forced the issue with those... Um... <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, well. A well-deserved last place. Um, mainly because there wasn't a lot to shoot at. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we shall swap over to the um, over to Belfast. Oh, hello. Now I have a choice. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't have a choice at all. <laughs> One of the downsides. This is actually really important here um, because this recovers so much health you wait so much longer before you use it that it's actually possible to get to the end of the game and you're still on cooldown when you need it. Making this essential if you have such an effective health repair. 
Right, here we go in the Belfast in our ice, our winter camouflage. I finally worked out that you have to click on those items from the um, from the Blitz event in order to uh, take the rewards. Right, we have the Graf Zeffelin on our side again. Maybe the same guy, I didn't check. Um, it's a six and seven. We have a Liebrick Mask, maybe the same guy again on the other side. Okay, and the Haven map. Right, oh, there's one thing I'll tell you about the Haven map is I hate the Haven map. <laughs> I'm no good on the Haven map. There goes my dog cooking off at the neighbours driving around the place. They're allowed to drive around the street. Okay. Okay, we're getting the action stations, the Atsuharu. There's no way that I'm going to bother trying to compete with the Atsuharu for that. Um, for that, for that capture zone. The Algeri is a long range um, spamming cruiser, just like I am. Absolutely not ideal for taking a capture zone. So the Dallas, okay. I'm going to have to rethink my HE strategy here. Normally what I do is a fire HE, burn them down. But I think in this case, Let's see what we see first. Oh yeah, regroup. Well, you're the guy that ran off into your own capture zone. Here's the Atlanta. Fortunately in the Blitz game, Atlanta does not have radar, which means that, as you can see, I'm out of range and we're detected and we just let them have it. That hurts. Oh, that was 11 hits. <laughs> He's going for cover. He's out of his smoke. Right, he didn't like that. Sort of waste of smoke, really. Okay, then I guess we have to do our business and uh, contest the caps. Oh, wow. That's, we've got one ship that looks like he's in a world of hurt. Oh, that's the Sims. That's them. Okay, well that's going to be a bit embarrassing. Right. I oh, know, it's a Dallas. Phew. Sorry about that. That was just pointless. Okay, we've got the Dallas and the Atlanta. And we're going to close range this Dallas. Six hits. Okay, well that was no good. Instead, um, we will deal with this Atlanta. Who's going to try and deal with me? Oh, he does. He does a very effective job there. As you can see, the mark is up. I've got one guy firing at me, so I know that I don't have to worry about the, um, I've only got this guy, there we go, he's gone, I've got no one, no one tracking me, um, we've got a Dallas here, getting targeted by an aircraft carrier, so time for a bit of, okay, now I think we're going to get a bit of a problem with the, um, the destroyers wanting to have a go. Because if I was them, I'd probably try and sneak around the corner and have a go, but that's not really the, the, the go. So what are we gonna do? So we're gonna accelerate. He's gonna force his way out. And we're going to defend, oh, here you go, I'm getting targeted by something. Okay then, I don't know if, well, that hurts. Whatever hit me, that hurt, but anyway. Can't let him get near our carrier. Getting targeted by something big and ugly. Oh, it's probably that Fuso. Okay, well. Ok, 
Okay, this is the Liebrich mass, he's mine. Yeah, he's going to try and sneak around the corner and launch some torpedoes. Let's just make sure that we uh, spot his... Yeah, he hasn't launched. But anyway, we turn away because you always assume the last thing an enemy destroyer has done is launched his full complement of torpedoes. And if you don't, then you may end up wearing his full complement of torpedoes. And now it's mopping up. We've got big targets, so we're back on HE for our um, Belfast, but they're well out of the way. We're ahead. We have held an extra capture zone for a while. Our destroyer's being very brave down to the south there. Although that cruiser will hopefully take his revenge because by the looks of it, that carrier knows how to run away from destroyers and only has to do so for the next 23 seconds. Now, <laughs> Graf Zeflin, that Graf Zeflin guy is either insane or brilliant. And <laughs> I'm tending more towards brilliant because he's maintained pretty good position throughout this entire game. Here we go. Final shots of the game. See if we can land something on him. No. Okay then, there you go. That is the Craft Zeph Well deserved first place. <laughs> I don't know how he stayed in control of his ship and his planes. Good on him. Obviously helps having an extremely effective carrier player on the team. So that is the legendary Captain David Beatty and also an introduction to Von Hipper. Rather long video, but hopefully worthwhile and educational. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time and I'll switch off the video before I go and watch this, <laughs> this advertisement for some extra commander points to get closer to that Mistweaver. Thank you.